Welcome to another Kings of War 3rd Edition Battle Report. Rakin vs. Dwarves. Scenario Loot. Alright, let's talk about my Ratkin army. Uh, probably never going to use it again, but anyway, let's talk about it. The uh, It's 2300 points, had two warrior regiments, three units of shock troops, all with plague pots and all with halberds. And I totally forgot all the magic items I had on them. So from now on, I'm not taking magic items on shock troops because I'll always forget about them. Um, a mutant rat fiend, two regiments of vermitide, two units of claw shots, two weapon teams, a brood mother, um, and I just took the upgrade. I didn't take the drain uh, life thing on it. Mother Kryza, which was actually pretty good. And then the two warlocks with the inspiring talisman one of them had and the uh, boomstick the other one had. And lastly, a swarm crier with loot. All right, let's talk a little bit about deployment. One of the things I didn't notice when I started playing the game is that how large the train pieces are. The dwarf army could hide basically three hordes and a gigantic guy and a general in one set of woods. And then the hills basically covered the entire middle of the table and nobody could see. So uh, my mistake may be for not insisting on a little bit lighter terrain. I don't really care about it being light. I just don't think it needs to be as big. So anyway, it just didn't even occur to me until I was playing and I noticed the entire dwarf army in that woods in the bottom corner. Uh, in, in, in fairness, I did have shooting and so, I mean, I would have probably done the same exact thing. But I'm just saying is if the pieces of terrain were a little smaller, maybe they wouldn't all be in there. So anyway, so I set up from left to right. I set up with the warrior unit. Then uh, you can't see him in the woods, but the uh, boomstick magic user was there. A rattling gun. I mean, weapons team. Vermintide behind with the one shock troop behind him. Mother Kryza in between. Another Vermintide unit with another horde of shock troops behind them. Uh, the first units of Giselles. I forgot what they're called. Claw shots, and behind them the other brood mother. Then the next unit of shock troops in the pond are the other unit of claw shots. Then the another unit of warriors, the mutant rat fiend, and finally the last weapon team. Okay, now to the dwarf army. On the far left was a unit of Brock riders. In the middle were two units of throwing mastiffs, I think. And then two regiments of the Iron Breakers, maybe. The guys that have the six armor save. And then a big horde of regular um, dwarf warriors in there by, with a BSB behind them. On the right was two hordes of Earth Elementals, bought with the Greater Earth Elemental, a general on a large beast. Behind them, another unit of Brock Riders. And then there was like a little missile guy that was uh, on a Brock. And uh, I think his job was to go and try to take out uh, shooters, magic users, and things like that, which was which is a great role for him. Um, anyway, that was deployment. There were three objectives: one in the exact center, of course, one next to the wall, and one on the far left to me. Uh, actually, my plan was to actually take the middle and the right, and I ended up taking the left, and uh, which was kind of a weird juxtaposition from what I initially started playing this game. Alright, this was after both of our turn ones. Um, I shuffled forward a little bit. Total mistake. I either should have stayed put or I should have moved forward with everything. The, uh, I guess I was trying to use the claw shots to shoot some stuff and instead I kind of messed my movement up by not uh, just ignoring the claw shots and when it going ahead and uh, moving forward so I mean even on the far left there my shock troops could easily take a charge from Brock riders I mean I've got phalanx uh, I've got the plague pots just a mistake not moving those guys forward just to, to get into the fight on the right I moved the uh, weapon team and the mutant rat fiend forward and then a unit of warriors and I was trying to create a gap I guess to shoot through I did a couple of wounds to the missile guy um, 
I did five wounds to the Brock Riders from a distance, probably from the between Mother Kryza and the Boomstick Warlock. Uh, I think that was actually fairly low for the amount of shooting that I had going into those guys, but you can already see the development of, of his plan, and uh, again, you can see two hordes of elementals, a greater elemental, and a horde of Brocks in one woods. So uh, that was well played uh, by my opponent because that just keeps my shooting from doing anything. And of course, all those units have Strider. I think the Brocks had the Jesse's boots on them as well. So uh, getting anywhere near them was a mistake on my part. All right, the, uh, on Dwarf turn two, the Brocks on the left hand side charged into my Warriors in the Woods, uh, doing five wounds to them, but did not. Um, break them. Uh, I think the they had the potion of the caterpillar but they caught the edge of that wall which I would like to say was my intention but it probably was not. Uh, his missile guy went ahead and charged my magic user and wavered him. Um, other than that that was pretty much it but you know he's got a nice line formed with the cover of the woods there the wall in his way and just doing a great job of pushing me back and instead of being aggressive and doing something like getting my guys online, I screwed up and just left them all disjointed like that. On my left side, I just withdrew the warriors from the fight and then hosed them with Mother Kryza, a warlock, and the weapons team and got him up to 10 wounds but did not get rid of him. I think my dice were actually a little crappy for that particular one. Um, the rattling gun, I mean, I'm sorry, the weapons team on the right side got the general, or got the guy up on the big beast up to four wounds. Uh, I did shoot into, I did kill the uh, uh, missile guy with a combination of the brood mother's attacks and the um, claw shots. So it was gone, thank goodness. And uh, would allow my army to get better, but like I said, you can see that I have I am disjointed. I should have if nothing else just dropped the shock troops back uh, on the right hand side just to get them out of range of stuff. So I mean, tournament. I mean, the game is going pretty well right now. It's just it's just I can, I can see my mistakes in 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 retrospect. All right, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. The um, I had moved the shock troops were way too close to the. Greater Earth Elemental and the Horde of Elementals and suffered for it. Now my fault was not popping the plague pots because I'm a moron and uh, and for, of course like I said forgetting all the magic items that the shock troops had which you spent a lot of points on them and they didn't do anything. Um, on the right hand side his other Earth Elementals had charged into my Mutant Drap Fiend which was holding surprisingly well. Um, my Claw shots held several charges from Brock Riders by the benefit of their new higher armor um, that they have in this edition. Over on the left, my warriors came out of the woods and I was trying to head toward the objective with Mother Chrysa was there too, trying to take that left objective. I mean, if you look at it, yeah, I'm losing the game here, but a little bit of luck with the uh, Mutant Drat Fiend. Uh, would help me get that other objective and keep right on moving because now he's so far past me and this is really where I missed not having the uh, vermin lord or scud as we call him and that could have changed the entire game because it just changes the way you move not necessarily that he kills stuff but he could have just easily just jumped over that stolen that objective and kept right on moving and so you know I look at the mistake of the made during the game but also look at there's probably some mistakes I made in my army list and really this is the first time I've played 2300 points with Rack and I've been playing a very streamlined 2k army that I've been playing my friend Vega with and uh, now with all these extra points it's, it was just like I don't know what to take and so I'm going to work on that and try to come up with a little better list. Alright skipping ahead again Mother Christ has taken the left objective and went ahead and lightning bolted his army standard bear. His dwarves had flank charged my warriors and 
I look back and I really don't know how that happened, but um, probably just a stupid mistake on my part and just got maybe the corner of them uh, being able to be charged. Over on the right, my mutant rat fiend is trading blows with the um, elementals and doing really well. I mean, between regeneration and the aura, uh, I was staying in the, the staying in the fight there. Uh, the remarkable thing up in the top right was that my claw shots had held off those stupid uh, brocks for yet another turn, and now they were up to eight wounds, probably from being shot. So. That was kind of cool. Uh, the shock troop regiment in the middle gets double charged by his big horde and by his the armor six horde. Uh, he bane chanted the armor six guys, and I think he took them out, but I'll have to look in a minute. The uh, on the left there, his uh, armor six guys had flipped around and were now moving back toward the shock troops on the left. So. Anyway, I mean, it just goes to show you in a game that that just because you're losing your troops doesn't mean you can't win the game. I guess that's the thing I learned from this game. The uh, A little bit more luck with the Mutant Rat Fiend, and I could have easily won the game, even though I wouldn't have any troops to speak of left on the table. Okay, this is the last picture of the game. I didn't take as many pictures during this game, and I don't know why. Uh, I probably just need to put the, uh, the screen on video record and just do the captures out of it like I do the... Uh, when I'm taking uh, videos of real games. On the right hand side I actually had a chance I broke the elementals and could overrun to the objective but then the reroll from the stone priest uh, kept him in the game and that was it for him because then his on the last turn his greater elemental was going to charge him in the flank and kill him. Uh, the claw shots finally succumbed and over on the left hand side my last unit of shock troops died. I mean, I killed one unit of his, uh, the armor six guys, but they, uh, but it was it was too little, too late. But like I said, if you really look at the game, if I would have broke the elementals, I could have overran and taken that objective and actually won the game because I could have picked it up and kept moving into his half of the table. But I mean, it wasn't likely because he still had surge on his uh, on his stone priest, so it's hard to say. But I mean, as it is, I lost, and it was a well deserved loss because of all the mistakes I made. But it's like I said, you got to keep battling to the end, just because, like I said, it doesn't matter if your guys are dying as long as you're you're thinking about the objectives and the and the and the uh, and how to win the game. All right, I want to th say my final thoughts about this game. For one, uh, Monty, the guy I played against, did an excellent job of just boxing me in and finishing me off. Uh, much respect for him as a player. Uh, my friend Vegas played him as well and uh, says the same thing, that, that he's an excellent player and that you better be on your... You better be thinking about every move you're going to make before you make it. My thoughts on my army was I really think that my army actually had most of the stuff to to have won this game if I would have played more correctly uh, perhaps maybe even if the terrain was a little less it doesn't have to be that much less just a little bit less so that my shooting could have a little bit higher effect so I, I shouldn't whine about it because I'm I had a, a, a little bit of shooting um, so anyway one of the interesting things about the army that, that I thought was interesting was the combination of the warlock with the boomstick and then just a regular warlock mother Chrysa with her five, uh, five dice lightning bolt and then the other brood mother with a staff to give you basically a short range five dice lightning bolt so that was quite a bit of shooting damage from from those p potential shooting damage I would say and against what I was like an, a, an army that actually had four plus armor guys in it a lot of them I really think that that would, uh, you know, do a good job on, on messing up or at least weakening their units. The um, my shooting as a whole in the game was a little subpar. I mean, I don't ask for my shooting to be good. I just ask for it to be quasi statistical. And sometimes, you know, there was it was like I roll five hits and then do no wounds. So 
some of that was happening. I'm not going to blame Dice either. Uh, because like I say, this game, I just got my butt beat. And but the thing is, is like if you don't, if you start realizing that what you're doing, and you don't change, you're going to get your butt beat repeatedly. And and I'm still learning the Ratkin for this edition. My old edition army was, I mean, I swamped the table with slaves, and that's the way I played was just jamming everybody in every possible manner. And in this edition, I haven't really quite came up with a play style yet. But the one thing that I didn't do this game that I have had in the past, I've been using the um, the chariots, I forgot, with tunnel runners, in my other list, and they have done really, really well. I mean, they're practically immune to the uh, pikemen, unless they're human pikemen, with the uh, ensnare. And so they can really bless through the phalanx units uh, fairly well. And as I pointed out to uh, to Ben last night when I was talking to him, their their stats are very similar to Brock Riders, except that they have better armor than Brock Riders, and that they have crushing and thunderous charge. So they're actually hit harder than Brock Riders. Now the downside of them is that their morale is a little bit lower. They're fourteen sixteen, but if you put the Scud with them. The Scud has Rally too, so now they're the same as the Brock Riders. So you can see that I mean, there is some synergy there and something they might try. What I lacked in this army was the speed. I, I didn't have any way to just change the way my opponent moved. And he could move where he wanted to move whenever he wanted to move there because I didn't have anything that could, could outcharge his Brocks or something that could make him not want to turn a flank to something so I think that's going to be the big change in the army list and I'm not saying making it tougher I'm just saying make it different where having a little bit more speed in the list to change the way people move they just can't walk across the table because I can just about tell you that even with those guys with their armor six uh, you don't want to get hit by a unit of tunnel runners especially if they're bane chanted they will they will leave a mark that's for darn sure and the other thing I did during this game is just stupidity I forgot all my magic items on my shock troops the second thing I did was I forgot that Ratkin Bane Chant is three dice not two dice and that would have changed the game remarkably if I'd had some Bane Chants when I needed them I think out of six Bane Chants I got one to work which I know is unusual but that extra dice would have made all the difference in the world and that was just my fault I mean it wasn't anything to do with anybody else it was just me getting in the in the uh, middle of the action and just forgetting things and I've just got to do a better job and uh, of doing that and trying to fix it so anyway that's just some thoughts I am going to change my army list a little bit I might put the scud in there or I might put the tunnel runners in there uh, thinking of maybe dropping one unit of shock troops for the tunnel runners maybe with a potion of the caterpillar on them or something along those lines but the uh, the scud does a good job just because uh, he changes the way people move I mean any of the units he had are really good but you don't want to get charged by in the flank with 26 attacks hitting on threes with crushing three that will leave a mark I don't care who you are and that's the reason why you take him. It's just not because, I mean, the, yes, the attacks are vicious, but the biggest thing is it changes how people move. You cannot leave a flank hanging in the wind. In other words, instead of moving forward at, at the most optimum speed, you have to slow down to make sure that you keep your front to that thing. And like I said, that's the biggest advantage of, of, the, of that to me is not so much the killing, which is nice about killing, but because it changes the way people move and the way people react to your army.